Alrighty guys, we're gonna start doing the math, or it's actually done. So I would like to apologize, because after recording the whole tutorial and editing the first and the last part, whatever, I didn't notice that the door rotations were kind of fucked up in the sense of this part here, the math of the door, it wasn't working accordingly because for some doors it worked perfectly but for other doors that were set apart like in a different location it didn't open depending on the on the player location so i had to go in today and fix the whole system up and re-record the math part of the tutorial so again i apologize i did it wrong the first time so i'm gonna show you how it's done correctly okay let's start slowly okay so where we left off on the second video was starting the math and what we're gonna do is on interacting with door i added a parameter for the player so i can plug in when i call interacting with door i plug in the player as a parameter so we can use the player forward vector in here uh, previously I had the location of the player world location and using this math right here it didn't gi give the same results based on the doors location so it didn't work correctly okay once you set the player and you you get the, the forward vector of the player you get that and then you get the door open location which is the scene component we're using to detect where the player is facing so we get that forward vector also and we use the dot product which is a math thingy I'm not go gonna go into that so forward vector the actor forward vector we're gonna type dot product and this little node is gonna pop out so then you plug in the forward vector of the door open location and it should give you a number between 0 and 1 and negative point whatever which is the correct uh, location where the player is standing accordingly to the door we're gonna I'm not gonna explain it too much we're gonna see it in an action so I print the result out just to see where we are at and basically how it works is depending on this result if it's above zero then we're gonna set this variable which is a float which is gonna uh, set where the door is gonna open which is basically a value 1 and negative 1 so if it's below 0 a negative number it's gonna result in a negative rotation but it's, if it's above 0 it's gonna be a positive rotation so after that's set we're gonna then set interacting with door true and start the timer to st stop the door rotation from working. So it goes here, then we check the door state and set it accordingly to if I'm opening the door, it's gonna, if it's closed, it's gonna set to partially open. If it's partially open, it's gonna set to open. And if it's open, it's gonna set to closed perfectly. So we go down, tick already explained that now here so you remember this float above here which is basically one or negative one this we multiply it by the rotation so we take the rotations that we set previously the partially open rotation the fully open rotation so we multiply that value with the door side to open which will either open positive 15 or negative 15 and we do the same thing with the open rotation which is 90 so it will either give positive 90 or negative 90 and to reset the the value back to zero we don't need to multiply that so also if you're lost just pause the video and copy what I did so you get it working perfectly and I think I haven't changed anything here it's the same way except I think the interpolation speed okay and finally 
after that's working, I played the door sounds. I made a custom event where depending on the door state, it's going to play different sounds on the location of the door. So, blah, what happened here? Okay. So if it's closed, it's going to play the open sound. But if it's open, it's going to play the closed sound. Okay. So I think I went over that. If you lost, again, just pause the video, look at the code, or ask me questions. Good. I think we're set. Yep. Okay, so let's see it in action. Wait. Let's put this back to minimize so we can see the output log and we can see the numbers. So let's go to the door. Let's press E. So we can say it works perfectly on this side. Let's go to the other side. And it works nicely. Now let's go to the other doors. there you have it guys look below on the numbers let's quickly glance over that let me close this so look at the numbers if we're standing in this side of the door we can see that the numbers are positive but if we go on this side the numbers are negative back then on like I said before, I recorded this part and I had to re-record it again because I got the math part wrong. But my problem before was that I was comparing the actor location instead of the forward vector. So for these doors it worked perfectly, but when I try to open these doors it only opened to one side. And that's where I got it wrong. So we basically learn how to make the door mechanics of Resident Evil 7 on the most simplified form. I know some of you guys have been asking for the physics part of it or the animations. I wish I could do that but then I had to animate the hands and then blend the animations. But I think, I think, they do that by having a collider in the player and detecting if the player is touching either a wall or a door and then the animations blend depending on that type which is pretty cool like they do it also in, in Outlast so like I said before I just make these tutorials very simplified I just wanna show you guys and myself how to look at mechanic and recreate it from scratch on the most simplified form so you can take that mechanic and mold it however you wish. That's the whole part of these tutorials and I jumped into this tutorial without any previous practice before recording. I just watched the video and tried to recreate that while recording. That's the whole fun part of this because I'm learning and you're learning at the same time. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please like, comment, give me any more suggestions. I'll take anything and I'll make your suggestions into a tutorial. So see you in the next video guys.